The number one mistake that tens of thousands of pre-meds make every single year is mismanaging their extracurriculars. On one end of the spectrum, there are the pre-meds who say yes and take on every single opportunity. And on the other end of the spectrum are the pre-meds who say yes only to the most perfect opportunity out there. Neither of these are the answer. And today you'll meet Aditi, a pre-med who will show you how to build a competitive application step-by-step -step in two distinct phases. And in addition to those two phases of your pre-med journey, we'll also take away two core lessons from her own resume. I'm Mike, I'm an anesthesiology resident in New York City, and I'm the co-founder of Pre-Med Catalyst. I graduated from UCLA and trained at UCLA Medical School. And for the last seven years, I've helped pre-meds just like you get into their dream medical school. Take a look at Aditi's initial resume. There are two teaching and mentorship activities, two research-related activities, and two clinical experiences. She's built a pretty standard pre-med profile. Right now, it's pretty cookie cutter, but we're starting to see Aditi's passions and interests peek behind the curtain. Now, compare it to what her resume looks like today. First, notice that there are extracurricular activities that are no longer here. Morning sign out and hospital volunteering are places where she doesn't invest time in any longer. Instead, we've added a community health education underserved pillar, and we've really expanded our work here in the Sikh community. And this brings us to the first lesson that Aditi's resume teaches us, the two phases of building out your pre-med profile. When you're a freshman or a sophomore with more bandwidth, that is the time to say yes to everything. Take on 10, 12, 15 extracurricular activities. Spend 10, 25, 50 hours in each to really get a sense of whether you enjoy it or not. If you give it a real honest try, you'll learn whether serving the unhoused or studying cancer or community health for immigrants or global health will be your true core pillar and passion. Give these a real honest effort because that's the only way where you'll be confident you'll figure out what your true passions are. But there comes a transition point where you have to move to phase two of your pre-med journey. At this point, you have a good sense of what really matters to you. For Aditi, it's her Sikh tradition and serving the underserved communities around her. And now this is where you transition from saying yes to everything to saying no to everything except for your pre-designated core pillar. Aditi is healthily in phase two. Just take a look at her Sikh pillar. This is clearly a core proven pillar in her life. She has demonstrated excellence and is world class here. And the most dangerous mistake that pre-meds make is not transitioning from phase one to phase two. It's staying with the research experience that costs five hours a week, even though you know that your core pillar is education not stem cell research. It's deciding not to quit that hospice volunteer position because medical schools want to see that, right? If you need more time to explore, to stay in phase one, then do that. But when you're ready to commit and transition to phase two, do that wholeheartedly. By the way, if you're struggling to build the theme for your application, that's totally normal. It's hard to know what a good theme is or what the right pillar is for you. The truth is, while every pre-med's journey to medical school is unique, it sure helps to see real examples of people who have done it before. If you're finding a DT's real resume helpful, you'll find the application database even more helpful. Everything from the GPA, the MCAT, to the personal statement, the extracurriculars are there for you to see. There's my application that got me into UCLA and many others that have earned acceptances at UCSF, Vanderbilt, UCSD, USC. If you wanna see real experiences that have what it takes to get into real medical schools, the application database forever free. It's one click away in the link in the description box. Now let's zoom in on Aditi's work in the Sikh community. I want you to focus in on her homeless food distribution, her Kirtan Harmonium, and her Gatka martial arts activity. They each have crossed 1,000 hours, the Kirtan 2,000 plus hours, and even after a decade, these things are still going strong. It's no surprise that she's competed in over 25 martial arts competitions, served 10 of thousands of meals in LA and across the world, and is now senior enough to be a judge at the Kirtan competitions. The takeaway here is that doing more works. It's undeniable that Aditi is having a significant impact in her community. She's a role model for younger Sikh children 
and is engaging with her community in so many different ways. And your impact can be in anything that you genuinely care about. For Aditi, it's her Sikh tradition. For me, it's teaching, mentorship, and the Vietnamese Hispanic immigrant population. For Steve, who got into UCLA Medical School on a full ride scholarship, it's basketball, and it's working with the incarcerated folks in the justice system that he believes deserve a second chance. The critical mistake that pre-meds make is chasing shiny, new, unique objects, when really there is something already core that you're exceptional at. Some pre-meds think it's generic of an interest, and some pre-meds think that medical schools won't care about their Sikh tradition, or their interest in basketball, or their blog on skincare. What pre-meds fail to remember is that Impact stands on its own regardless of what domain it's in. Do more because your competitive advantage lives here, not in being another pre-med who is an EMT, hospital volunteer, medical scribe. Your genius is here, not for being the fundraiser chair for the American Medical Association chap. No, those activities are not the thing that will get you into medical school. This is. So stick with your core pillar. Over years and thousands of hours, you will become the number one pre-med in this domain. And at that point, it becomes impossible for other pre-meds to compete with your 10 plus years playing the harmonium, doing the martial arts, servicing the unhoused in downtown Los Angeles. And the crazy part is that Aditi is still years from applying. If she focuses on executing phase two properly, that's two more years in her psychiatry lab. At this point, she's already completed five literature reviews. What does it look like in two years when she's better and faster at conducting literature reviews? What does it look like for the United Seek food distribution activity if she has two more years to expand to more countries, more people, and more places. How many more thousands of people can she serve and how good can she get at helping them? So if you're looking to learn from Aditi's journey, make sure you know what phase of your pre-med journey you're in. If you're in phase one, explore and explore hard. Look to figure out where you want to dedicate the next couple of years of time and expertise to. And if you're in phase two and you found something that works, don't get bored. Keep doing more. Keep pushing at it. Excellence and that impact that you strive for, the publications, the awards, the media attention, the thousands of people and patients to support, that takes years to get to. And if you think that's hard, welcome to medical school admissions. What's even harder than that is to apply to 25 medical schools with a mediocre generic application and get in nowhere. That's heartbreaking and the what ifs are unbelievably painful. I know that from my roommate and my closest friends that did not get in and the stories of the thousands of pre-meds who felt the same fate. And no one wants that. So if you're feeling confused, lost, or just worried about your pre-med journey, you are not alone. I make videos just like this so that everyone can understand medical school admissions just 1% better. And if this video was helpful for you, you may want to consider working with us directly. Pre-Med Catalyst has a mentorship program where we help you, just like we do with a DT, take control over your pre-med journey. We'll figure out your theme, what phase you're in, what extracurriculars you need during this time, and what extracurriculars to target during next semester. Most importantly, you'll have a one-on-one -on -one personal accountability and support system that will help you make the right strategic decisions to maximize your chances of becoming a doctor. If you're interested, there is more information about our mentorship program in the link in our description box below. In another one of our application reviews, I talk about Sam, whose application looks competitive, but really is not. He falls privy to the most common mistake that pre-meds make today, overemphasizing title. I break down his entire application here and you'll wanna make sure that you watch that video so you don't make those same mistakes. Thank you for your time and I'll see you there.